I thought I'd do a video on Viva Learning and specifically on how we can use SharePoint as a learning source in Viva Learning. The agenda I'll follow in the video is how does it all come together? So how does Viva Learning actually consume sources outside of itself? We'll look at setting up a Viva Learning uh, connection to SharePoint. This is not going to be a technical dive but more a high level look at how that is set up and what happens in the back end. And we'll cover that in, the, in a slide or two as well. And then we'll have a look at what the experience is like for an end user consuming Viva Learning content. And we'll look at consuming content from, let's say, the traditional sources that Viva Learning ships with, as well as SharePoint content. Viva Learning uses different learning sources that it provides as a service through an app inside of Microsoft Teams. So the Viva Learning service will consume the services that you see on screen in the middle here. Um, and some of them are baked in. So when you switch on Viva Learning and you just enable as a default, things like Microsoft Learn and um, access to certain levels of LinkedIn Learning are available to you already. If you have an additional learning source that you use that falls into one of these categories on screen, uh, for instance, if you're using Udemy or Success Factors or Pluralsight, you can have Viva Learning connect to your account that you have in these learning providers, catalog, and then present that content um, to users in the learning app. What's missing here is what about that content that we really have in SharePoint where I've maybe created a PowerPoint or I've created a stream video um, or where I have some content installed inside a Word document um, that people are used, we use as learning internally. So it might be a bit more unstructured, but still a very valuable learning asset. Well, in this case, you can bring SharePoint in as an additional source of content for Viva Learning. And that is done by pointing Viva Learning at a content source or a content hub inside of SharePoint. It'll then expose that content to the Viva Learning app uh, when the users access it. The Viva Learning service, when you enable the SharePoint connection, creates a learning hub in SharePoint. For those of you familiar with SharePoint as a product, this is basically a site collection, either a team site or a communication site. We typically recommend using a communication site because of the richness when it comes to present, presenting content. Inside that learning hub in SharePoint, a list is created called the Learning App Content Repository. This is literally a SharePoint list with a name column and a URL column. Inside, the, inside this list, you basically point to all the different areas in SharePoint where you have learning content. So you can have multiple content sources in SharePoint that Viva Learning can actually go and interrogate and catalog and make available to users through the Viva Learning app inside of Microsoft Teams. What this means, and it's quite a fundamental thing here, is that if I have content, say for instance, stored inside my HR site, and other learning content in maybe the IT side, or maybe something specific around a product offering, I don't need to move that content into the learning hub. I can leave it where it is, and the learning app um, and the repository will go and discover it based on the fact that I've added that link to the repository system and go and do the cataloging and make it available. The type of content we can surface using the um, learning service is Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and PDFs, audio and video formats. This list does tend to grow quite a bit. I know, for instance, recently they've added uh, Visio Online capability as well. Um, so you can expect to see this growing over time. My favorite part here is Microsoft PowerPoint. And the reason I say that is PowerPoint is a multimedia tool. So apart from doing slides like we're doing right now, um, I can do things like embed video into a PowerPoint presentation, presentation. I can embed pictures. I can embed interactive components like Microsoft Form to get feedback uh, while somebody's doing a learning experience. And I can embed video sources like Microsoft Stream or YouTube into my PowerPoint. So I don't need to go and add these as individual learning items. I can actually build up a nice little curriculum or module just using PowerPoint and then have the learning service present that back to the end user. Uh, so PowerPoint is a really, really powerful tool when it comes to creating learning content inside your enterprise, storing in SharePoint and have Viva Learning presented to the end users. 
Let's look at how we connect the Viva Learning Service to SharePoint and to use as a content hub. First, two things that we have to do. First of all is go and create a SharePoint site collection that we use as our content hub. I've created a site collection called Learning and I've used a communication site and I've used one of the built-in templates provided by SharePoint called the Learning Hub template. Uh, dead easy, one click and it's there, no need to go and customize it, that's all we need for now. You can go in at a later stage and customize this specific site to have your specific content and add anything else that you need from a learning perspective. Once you've got that URL, and we'll copy that across over there now, we can go back to our Office 365 Admin Center. The Office 365 Admin Center is where we need to do the learning setup initially. Under settings, you can go to org settings, and once you click on that, right at the bottom under the services tab, you will find Viva Learning. Clicking on that will fire up the right hand side flyout that will give you access to the learning settings. We're not going to go through all these in detail today, just looking at the SharePoint content. You'll notice as we're scrolling down, the other content sources are there and some configuration information about them. What we're interested in is the SharePoint one. All we need to do to enable SharePoint as a source is click the checkbox and put in the URL that we've uh, created earlier. I've already done that, so it's already sorted out. Once you've done that and you click the Save button, what will happen in within about 15 minutes to two hours max, uh, learning services will go and look at the site collection, make sure it can connect to it, and if it can, it will recognize it, it'll go and create a list inside that collection that it uses for its content sources, and we'll have a look at that in a moment. Once that's done, you're good to go and you can then start defining what your sources are inside of SharePoint. Let's quickly swap, switch over and have a look at what that list looks like. I've prepared this a day in advance, so we should have quite a reasonable amount of good content. To access that learning list, um, if you're a SharePoint person, you'll know this off the top of your head. Click on the settings cog, go to site contents, let that load and if you see a list called learning app content repository then you know that the initial setup has been completed. Let's have a look at what it looks like inside the learning app content repository. It's literally a two column list title and folder URL. If I click into it, title name is just a normal title, there's nothing strange or wonderful there. This you can use to describe what type of content you're surfacing, HR training, IT training, etc. The next is a folder URL. The folder URL, I'm going to copy this folder URL. The folder URL is the folder where you stored the learning content. Let's have a look at what that folder presents through to us when we click through to it. This is very much a stock standard SharePoint document library. It has the document name, the normal stuff we expect, modified, modified by, and then a description column. The description column has been added as an extra piece of metadata, and the reason why that's there is when the Viva Learning service uh, trawls through your content hub, it uses the Graph API, and it is able to take the metadata that's part of that content into its catalog so you get a better search experience and a richer learning experience. So whatever metadata you'd like to add about your learning content, add it into your uh, SharePoint document library so you can add additional columns as well. Looking at the type of content we have here, we've got a media file, so it's a video, PDFs, we've got docs, we've got PPTX, got some mp3s uh, from sound point of view, avi files, as an mov format file and right at the bottom we even have a Visio document. So as discussed previously in one of the other slides, this is a type of content that can be used as learning content. So if you already have this, you're basically there. Once I have added that folder in, it's a matter of waiting for the learning service to go and look at that link I've provided, go through to the content source, index it, and then make it available to the learning interface inside of Teams. Um, proviso here, the service syncs every 24 hours. So once you've added one of these links, it takes up to 24 hours before the link will appear in your learning experience. If you add new content to the source, the folder where you've got information, um, once again, it takes up to 24 hours before that content's available in the learning experience. 
Uh, this is because of the sync cycle. We're not sure that'll change in the future, but for right now, from a user expectation or from a learning expectation, whoever's creating your learning content, make them aware that it could take up to 24 hours before the content they create is visible to end users as part of the learning experience. Now that we have SharePoint as a learning source, let's look at how that is surfaced inside the learning app in Microsoft Teams. So for this part of the session, I've logged in as Megan into Teams. I'm using the Teams desktop experience. And on the left-hand side, my uh, admin has published the Viva Learning link as part of my Teams menu, so that's great, so I can jump straight into it. I'm not gonna go through all the different features and functions available in the learning experience. We'll do that as a separate video, but just to basically highlight how the SharePoint content is now part of what we get. So if you're looking at the learning experience, I can see content that has been presented to me based off interests that I've preset when I first logged in. I can see training content, and I can see content from different providers. I also have the option to just do a normal search. So I can go in and do a search on, oops, click further back there. Go into the search area and just type in something like safety and start getting results. There will be a, a drop down of a suggested content, but if I want to have a just a normal search experience, I can just click enter and get all the search results. So just using the word safety, I've got 6,261 results. That's a bit too much. Now I can use my refiners to drill down. So one of the things I want to do is look, do I actually have a, a source for SharePoint content? And I do. So right at the bottom, I can see that there's Contoso. Contoso is the name of my tenant. So if your tenant, in the case of us at Fusion 5, this will show Fusion 5. I can then say, only show me content from that source. And this is great because it means that the Viva Learning Service has picked up my SharePoint content and is now providing it for users to have a look at. There is a video that someone I was actually looking for, understanding safety regulations. That's the content I was I actually wanted to find. Click into it, it's gonna tell me that it's from Contoso, so I can see it's from my organization, tell me who the author was. And from here, I can then click in and open and have the video play inside the embedded Teams experience. And that is a, a, as we expected. So this is really, really cool. Everything's doing exactly what we're expecting to do and the way we expect it to work. If I go back to the main screen, let's go home, and I scroll down a little bit, I can actually see that there is a providers list, and if I want to see all the content inside of the Contoso tenant, I can click on providers, scroll down to where my Contoso environment is, and click see all, and that'll show me all the content. And these are the same files that we had inside of a document library, so you'll recognize the iconography uh, so we can see what type of file it is. And that's about it. So that's really, really cool. So once you've got your connections set up to SharePoint, you can point um, your SharePoint list at the, where the content sources are, make sure that people have permissions to view the content, wait up to 24 hours, and the content will be available inside of Microsoft. Um, Viva Learning inside of the embedded, embedded app inside of Teams and you're able to view it. We'll do another video in a week or two around a bit more of a deep dive into the learning experience and what's been added um, and all the new features inside of the Viva stack as well as Viva Connections. If you'd like a bit more information on what we did today, feel free to reach out to me. My email address is on screen or you can connect through us to us through uh, the Vision 5 website and just leave a a message on the contact section and we'll get back to you. Um, if you like more information on how Viva Learning works, how you can integrate it into SharePoint, for instance, maybe a bit more of a deep dive on the technical side and content creation, uh, we're able to assist with that as well. Um, if you'd like to see how Viva Learning connects into the rest of the Viva stack, uh, learning becomes quite an integral part of Viva connections as well. Uh, we'll look at how that fits in together. Um, and we can help you basically with the deployment of Viva Learning into the organization, not only from a technical side, but also from a change management perspective, how we can actually push that through into the organization so you start seeing high value um, with learning content. Thank you for watching.